Hello and welcome to this iMesh Asset Manager update video and this is the second update within two weeks because these are some settings which I've wanted for a long time and I use them myself on most of my projects anyway so I thought I'd put it into the Asset Manager and if you have some adjustments that you'd like to make to the HDR then this should allow you to do this. The first thing though we are on Twitter so I would really appreciate a follow I'll put the link in the description. We have also done a bug fix and that is fixing a problem where you import some old assets from Blender 2.79 and then you go to material preview and it crashes and that's because the the assets weren't telling the new version of Blender what color space the images are so we have fixed that so make sure you update it and then that will stop crashing and then you'll also get these new updates too with the HDR. So how the HDR works is basically if you go to any other category with any other asset, it will list it as it normally does. But if you go to the HDR, you will have some additional settings. If your settings are not there yet, it's because the, the world node shader has not been set up. So if I go here and so you can see the world node settings. And if you just have the import button, just choose the HDR that you like and then click import and then it will create these settings for you. And this is basically some node groups and whatever we change here will also change here and vice versa. So we can just close this now and just go through the settings and I can tell you what they do. So I might as well start from the top and this one is probably the most fun and that is the ground projection. And this is beta. There are definitely some better methods out there, but this is our first version and we'd like to kind of grow on this because if, for example, we go to 3D Studio Max, then they have also dome or ground projection and you are able to adjust the size of the dome and everything. Whereas in our case, the dome is an infinite dome and you're just putting a plane, which is also infinitely big, which you can adjust a little bit, but you don't have as much play as you would in a normal dome projection. But this is it there for now and I find it quite cool in certain cases, which I'll show you now. So you can see that this object, I have a, I actually have a plane with a shadow catcher, that's why you can't see anything. So the object is kind of floating around HDR as you'd expect. But if I turn on ground projection, the object is now planted to the ground. And if I go lower to the camera, it's almost as if I'm actually going closer to the ground, which I think is really cool. And there is some distortion at the edges. That's why it's probably best using this method if the HDR doesn't have some big close objects to the center. So say like a landscape or some outdoor environment scenes. This one is also really big. This is a big open space. So the distortion is happening at the edges and you can't really tell, but this texture is still a little bit too big. You can make this texture a little bit smaller by going down here and you can, you can see it going lower, but then you do get some more distortion at the edges. But it does mean that the texture is not as blurry and you can also fix this issue if you also get a 16K HDR, for example. But you can already see how it looks pretty cool here. And if you just add some bushes here, then you'll never be able to tell that there's some distortion. Okay, so let's have a look at a potential use case for this feature. And we are inside a room now and you can feel like you know how high you are in this scene. But if you were to put on ground projection and turn this on, you feel like the floor has now been pulled up to the bottom of the scene. So now the floor in the actual room feels like this is the floor continuing on. So if I turn that back off again, you know, it feels like we're maybe up a bit higher than we are, but if you put this to one, then it snaps us to the ground. And I think that's pretty fun. Um, you might have to play around with this setting a little bit. So 20 is like the texture is very, very large and we feel like an ant. But if we put this to something like four or five, the texture is being pulled away and we now feel like we're being snapped to the ground. I think five for this one is quite nice. Um, and of course, yeah, if you use a, a higher resolution HDR, then you won't see such pixelation here. Okay, so let's have a look at this next setting here. And these are the sun multiplier and sky strength. These two are the, probably the most important ones. So sun strength is adjusting the, the strength of the sun itself. So if I put this back, I don't know, minus 0.2, this is a little bit different for each HDR and how bright the sun is because this relies on a certain threshold that has to be crossed. And you can see now that the sun is not as bright. The shadows from the shadow catcher is not as strong. If I put this back down to zero, back up to zero, the shadows are getting stronger and the scene is brighter. So I've put this to minus 0.3. You can see the sun is almost getting turned off. And then if I go to minus one for this particular one, the sun is now turned off. And if we look at the sun, there is a threshold that has been crossed and that part has now been turned off. So if I also turn off the sky, it'll be black. But if we put this to one so we can see the sun, we can now see the brightness from the sun. And if we go back to our object, there is no sky illumination, but there is some from the sun. So that is some fine tuning that you can do there. So let's put this back to default. 
So let's say you have an interior scene and you want to increase the brightness of the interior, but you don't want to increase the brightness of the HDR outside. Then what you can do is increase the diffuse strength. So if you set that to 100, you can now see that the interior is getting much, much brighter than it was before. And and the interior is, is getting quite nicely lit. So let's, let's put this back down to one. So we have a ball here and this is reflection strength. So if we put this to 0.5, the reflections will be darker. And if we put this down to zero, then there'll be no reflection at all. And that is the same for all objects. And if we put this back to, back to one, we also have uh, background strength, which turns off the background, but now everything is still lit. Um, you can turn that on, which is also the case if you want it to be brighter, then you can also do that, but it doesn't affect anything in the scene. And the next thing we have is refraction strength. So that is everything going through glass. So we can set this to zero and our glass ball is like this. And if we go to the camera, the room is still being illuminated, but there is no outdoors. And that also goes the other way. So if you set that to 10, you can also blow out the exterior if you feel like that should be a bit brighter, which I also think that looks quite nice. And right, the next thing is coming to a little bit more cosmetic stuff. And that is temperature, tint and gamma and saturation. So temperature, if you whack that up, it'll get really warm. And if you pull that down, it'll get much colder. There we go. So if you if you have a HDR and you feel like it's just a little bit too warm or cold, you can adjust that for your liking. And we also have some tint. So that is purple tint and green. So that is also quite useful if your scene is appearing to be too purple. You can put it to be more green and vice versa. So let's put that back down to this one. And gamma is probably one of the most interesting ones as it increases the, basically the contrast of the HDR. So if we put that to 1.2, it'll make the sun brighter and everything becomes more as if you've just turned up the contrast, basically. That's what it feels like, but that is a bit strong. It also goes the other way. So you put that to 0.9 and it goes less contrasty. And this one is also really helpful for exterior scenes if you want a sun to be incredibly strong, but you don't want to change anything too much, then you could just put this to 1.1 and then the sun would be a bit stronger. Okay, so let's say you found a HDR and you like the lighting that it has, but you think that there's being too much of its color bleeding into the scene. Sometimes you can have a green exterior and the green is being cast onto the ceiling, which isn't always ideal, but you kind of really like the lighting and you want to adjust the lighting more fine tunely What you can do is put the saturation to zero and now this is a more crisp white light. You will obviously have to replace the background, but what this can do is that it allows you to give more play and experiment a little bit more with your own lighting inside the scene, because it's always nice to have a, a render which has a, a very good white balance. And this is a very quick way to do that. Okay, now let's have a look at the final settings. And these are the ones which I use all the time, mostly for uh, product shots. And I know exactly how I want to improve on this, um, but for now, this is what it does. So if you background place, choose this to one. And now we have a white background, but everything else in the scene is as it was. Um, so if you want to do a product shot and you want to have a white background, you can have that. You can also increase the, the brightness. That's gonna be a little bit too bright, but you kind of get the idea and you can change the colors as well. Okay. And also we also have a glass ball here, so you can also change that if you need to. And now that'll pick up the the pink and from the background as well. So now if you put it against here, it picks up this object, but this scene is also going to be pink. But what I'd quite like actually is to have some, also some filters, some background images that you can also have to maybe fade in and fade out some, some gradients or something like that for some product shots. And also, yeah, if you go inside, so now there's some glass. So if I turn that off, you can see outside. But if I set that to one, it replaces the outside. I'd also quite like to have it so that you can input a certain image if you'd like to, um, and not just a complete pure background white color. But you can also do that actually, if you go to the shader editor and go to the world, you can also plug that in here. So if you do have a texture, you can plug it in here and it will replace that. So if I just plug the same one in, we'll see exactly the same thing. 
but that is now the scene. So next update that we would like to do is having some separate tabs for your assets, your materials and your HDRs because it's a little bit hard to find if you have your own HDR category here and your materials category here. It should have its own tabs so it's a little bit easier to find and if you go to the HDR tab it instantly shows all these settings rather than having to if you want to change something going back to HDR and then changing them that way. And yeah we hope you like that next update. We have the next updates planned and they are going to be in the works very very soon so download the asset manager and if we make some updates you can also get the updates if you go to edit and preferences and if you go to imash you can then check for new updates and then it will tell you if something's new and you can release it from there so yeah thank you for listening and i will be back very soon i'm sure oh like and subscribe of course